Inga, welcome to InspireB3.com. Um, we're here with a conversation with Inga, who is a vitality chef in Iceland, and it's just going to be an audio conversation um, to enhance the knowledge of food through a professional. Um, so if you could just introduce yourself to everyone on the website and worldwide. Hi world, my name is Inga Kondrostadr. I am Icelandic and I am vitality chef. Um, if you could just explain um, for people who are not clued up, maybe I'm a vitality chef. Um, mm -hmm. Could you just describe your, your work and what you do and the meaning of vitality? Sure. Um, over the past five years or so, um, I've been doing seminars and lectures on healthy eating and healthy food. Um, I have been a chef for uh, almost 20 years now, mm -hmm. um, and um, when I started. When I started doing my uh, health journey, if you will, I I had developed allergies to fish, so I was forced to take a step back and, and take a good look at, at what I was doing to myself, um, and I had to reinvent my my eating habits and my lifestyle. Um, and when I started, there was there was no one to teach me. I I didn't know what to do, but luckily I was a chef, so I could make experiments in the kitchen. Um, and I've been my own guinea pig over the last, um, like I said, almost 20 years. Um, and I, what I like to do is, is, is take traditional re recipes and change them to make them healthy. Um, today, I see a lot of people who are in the same position as I was. They are either forced to change their, their eating habits because of illness, or they just simply want to. And there's there's no one to guide them, and that's that's when I started doing my my seminars, um, and I must be doing something right because I have I have almost twenty two thousand followers on Facebook in uh, a little over a year, so there's uh, there's definitely need for vitality chefs out there. And if you could talk about um, the different types of food, I mean, you've got. Say one one corner processed foods. Mm -hmm. You have uh, what they call organic foods, and so you've got raw foods as well for eating. If you could just um, break down those categories for us, um, mm -hmm. from what the standard diet is um, to a weight of the different types. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe starting with processed foods. Sure. Um, well, if you think about it, it, it makes sense that we are a part of nature. Yeah. You know, we die and then then we rot. Um, uh, our hair falls out and, 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 and all that blah blah and that's that's a an, an natural process um, only over the past 50 years or so we have started eating processed foods and that's when we have see, started seeing trouble all kinds of uh, new diseases are uh, popping up um, so being a, a part of nature it would make sense that we would eat food that nature provides us with. Nature never meant for us to eat um, processed foods that, that, that comes in, in package, package and uh, is neon green and, and, and whatever. Um, but it did provide us with, with a lot of you know, fresh vegetables and, and, um, and fruits um, and things like that. So it's, it's simple really. You know, when you look at food, think you know is this something that that nature would um provide for me yeah so it's, so you'd say it's sourcing what would come out of the ground rather than from the back of a lorry uh, from a factory or which has got plastic on it or yeah exactly from uh, from a factory and anything that has has chemicals in it mm. that that can't be good mm -hmm. because we were never meant to eat that yeah brilliant and if you could just explain uh, organic um People are starting to see now. There's more advertisements on organic mm -hmm. um, to you, or what is what is organic, um, and if you could explain what that is for people. Um. Mm. Sure, um, organic food is um, food that hasn't been sprayed with pesticides mm -hmm. and other chemicals. Um, it is a, a lot more nutritious than um, than traditional food um, that has been treated. So we are getting it's also more flavorful so we are getting a lot more for our money both health health wise um and just you know it just tastes so much better 
You know, if, if you take tomatoes, for example, you, you have a, a big a watery, overgrown tomato yeah. that doesn't taste like anything. And then you have, have a smaller tomatoes, organic, they're organic, um, and they are just vibrant in, in color. <laughs> and they're sweet and just delicious, you know. There's, there's a big difference. Um, and uh, with raw foods, um, to take it even obviously to the even another level, um, it's plant-based food and it's good food that's good for you. Mm -hmm. um, is there a certain way that raw food, for somebody who's interested in it, is that a certain way it's prepared? Is there a certain way that it is? I mean, do you just buy raw food and eat it, or is what methods um, do people use for raw foods? Well, the basic rule is um, you don't cook the food above uh, 40, 47 degrees Celsius yeah. because that's when that's when the enzymes in the food start breaking down mm -hmm. and it becomes less nutritious so um, when you eat raw food um, you are getting every single ingredient at, at the, the peak of their um, nutritional level so you get so much more out of it and besides the thing is about raw food is you need less. Yeah. You need to eat less. So the more nutritional value the food has, mm -hmm. the less you need to eat, which is very good for for uh, everyone out there who's who's battling um, weight, mm -hmm. for example. Um, everyone who who needs to save money, it's a big money saver. Um, and and that's just if we talk about that, that's that's just saving money on food. Yeah. And then, then you're saving money on, um, you know, hospital visits yeah. um, and doctor's visits and, and medicine. Um, medicine yeah. yeah. Brilliant. So when people, I know some people might be thinking, well, when I look at the organic range or something, the price looks more or they, it looks less for value. Um, mm -hmm. Would you would it be right in saying that just because it looks like it's smaller or less than um, a, a processed or a tr pesticide treated, mm. that it, like you said, it's got the flavour nutrition and you need less. Mm -hmm. So, in the long term, would you say that buying that way is better on a financial way? Oh yeah. Well? In in the long run, you're actually saving money in a lot of ways. Um, and I I remember in the old days when in my old life when I <laughs> we used to eat junk food. Um, I would need so much food, and, and I, I just I just kept eating and eating, and I, I would buy so much f food, and I would just and and I would just spend so much time eating, mm. you know. <laughs> so your 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 ah. time would your daily routine would be just revolve yeah, around food, food and, yeah. and, and you Do know. Do a task, have some food. Yeah, exactly, and, and just I would just eat anything, you yeah. know. Give me anything, <laughs> I'll eat it. <laughs> so um, a way that personally I found helping myself when I started with the food journey was juicing. Mm. Now, I noticed that juicing, I didn't lose weight. And I wasn't big, but I noticed that I did lose weight. Mm -hmm. but, um, and it, it came across to me that it was weight I didn't need, or mm -hmm. it was weight that was obviously not good because the juicer was just getting rid of it. Mm. Um, but it also increased probably my energy. Mm. Um, do you find that eating healthier is better for your energy levels as well? Um, for yourself, you notice that mm -hmm. maybe it's the times you don't need to rest as much because you're eating better. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's probably a while since you've had to feel that slump of uh, raw of, of processed foods. Mm -hmm. um, but vitality, do you, do you feel that increases your levels of energy? Oh yeah, absolutely. Um, I remember in the old days, um, I used to feel really lethargic after a, a big meal. I never feel that way anymore. Mm. Even even if I'm eating something that that's so good, like like for Christmas, mm. uh, this last Christmas, I, I actually overate for the for the first time in years. Um, but but I still felt felt good, you know. I still felt energetic. I, I still f felt I could go dancing afterwards, you know. <laughs> and um, what about people who they might take um, healthy eating as their journey, mm. but people surrounded by them mm -hmm. aren't on it, mm -hmm. so. What ways could you advise people that, you know, if you're going out to a restaurant mm. and you're with a group of people who don't eat healthy, if they want to go to somewhere that's maybe really fatty processed foods, mm -hmm. how have you learned to adapt? I mean, is it the point that you notice circles of friendship might change or is it the point that you notice you just look for the best option at that time? Mm -hmm. uh, well, it's a combination of both. I mean, obviously, um, 
Well, I'm, I'm lucky. I have such good friends that, that um, most of them, if not all of them, have, have embraced my lifestyle and, and accepted it. Mm -hmm. um, and that's the kind of friendship you want. If, if they don't, you have to ask yourself, you know, do you really need that pe people in your life? Mm -hmm. um, but obviously, obviously you have to respect other people's choices, just like I, I want other people to respect mine. Yeah. Um, so what I do, uh, for example, if, if I know I'm, I'm going out for dinner in, in, with a, a group of people who, who don't share my lifestyle, um, I usually eat beforehand, or sometimes I, um, I take food with me, or uh, I can call ahead and speak to the chef yeah. and uh, ask them if, if there's something on the menu that, that I can eat. Yeah. Um, and I mean, there's, there's always um, garden salad. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, if, if I eat beforehand and then just get the garden salad, everybody's happy. That in a glass of water. And yeah, exactly. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah.